Joe's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's video is, well, it's not a welding video. It's not a metal fabrication video. This is gonna be a woodworking video. I do everything here in Jimbo's Garage. It's not always sparks and fire, but uh, in this case, we're gonna be making a hat rack. As you guys know, I have a lot of hats and I'm still running out of space. I have got a little space in my shop right here uh, that I can make this hat rack and I, it's going to be 16 inches wide, 42 inches tall, and I think I can get almost 20 hats on that. Now that's pretty compact for the area it's gonna be going in. So what we're gonna be using here, or what you need, uh, it would be a couple of two by fours. I just happen to have a couple of uh, two by four, just redwood. Um, maybe not the choice, but uh, I happen to just have them sitting here and I wanna use them before they get all warped and no good at all and a one by six, uh, two pieces of one by six that are about 16 inches long. Well, I went through my scrap bin over there and I couldn't find the one by six that I was looking for that was 16 inches long, but I did find a piece of plywood and we'll be able to cut this thing down, uh, get two pieces 16 inches long and six inches wide out of that. We're gonna use that. Now, keep in mind, I'm not doing this, uh, you know, I'm mixing matching lumber right here, and, and that's fine for me because it's gonna be going in my office over here, but, uh, but for you guys, it, I'm just trying to give you the materials that you need to make a rack. You could use regular two by four, you could use whatever you want, dug fur, wh whatever, whatever suits your needs, but I'm just trying to give you the idea on how to build this rack that is super compact, that will hold a lot of hats. So, let's get started. All right, so first things first, I got over to the uh, compound miter saw and I cut the material to the length that we needed right here. And uh, you see me cutting the plywood right here. And I, I know that I said that this is what I'm going to be using, but I couldn't stand myself. I, I later changed it. You'll see in the video. I just wanted to have everything in the same material. And that's why I ultimately ended up with. Um, so here I'm just laying out uh, the holes that I need to. Uh, drill. I'm going to be drilling 10 holes on each side that's going to create a space to hold 20 hats. And the layout took a little bit of time, but once I got it figured out, I got everything marked up and it's time to drill some holes. Okay, so I'm getting ready to drill the holes out on these things. Now I've got, I got 10 holes to drill on each one of these 2x4s. And I guess what I'm concerned about is I've got a Forstner bit in here. This is a 2 and an eighth inch Forstner bit. And what I'm concerned about is when I'm drilling through that I'm going to get tear out on the back side. So I've set up this little, uh, this little stop block right here and I've got this uh, little jig that I had underneath my scrap table uh, that my wood pile down here I should say that might, might work here. So I've got this thing to butt up against this. This will butt up against this and every time I drill a hole uh, and go through I'm right flat against the bottom part of this plywood and I'm hoping that's going to reduce tear out. Then the next hole, I'll be able to slide this down into a fresh piece of wood, fresh piece of wood, fresh piece of wood, and hopefully that's gonna reduce the tear out. If I just kept it in one place and, and continued to drill 20 holes, as I drilled through the, the, the two by four into the base wood right here, it'd create a bigger and bigger and bigger hole and deeper and deeper hole, and this would increase the amount of tear out on the back side. Now, if I get a little bit of tear, I'm not too worried about it. This is a project here in the shop. I'm just trying to think if you guys are going to do this, uh, you maybe want more of a precise thing, then maybe this will work. So let's let's give it a try and just uh, just see the results and see how, how uh, if we can reduce that tear out on the backside. So let's get started and let's drill a few holes. Drilling really nice through this redwood right here, and I should be able to feel it once it goes through. <laughs> All right, let's see how we did. Well, there it is. We've got a little tiny bit of tear out, so maybe my theory doesn't work absolutely perfect, but maybe it could have been a lot worse than what it is. This is acceptable for me though. Let's get the rest of these holes drilled out. Well, that didn't quite turn out like I hoped it would. You know, I had a little bit of issues with that, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I managed to get all the holes drilled. 
with very little tear out and uh, worked out pretty good in my favor there. So this worked out really good. So once I got all these holes drilled, then it was time to lay out the, um, the little angle that I need to put on here. And you can see what I'm doing. I, I've just, I don't know what the angle is. I just kind of created it um, and use a piece of uh, uh, three quarter wood stock uh, to create the, the even gap there. It's a three quarter of an inch gap that I'm going to be ultimately cutting out. And uh, once I got everything done, just took it over to the bandsaw and cut everything out. You can see the idea is to cut these out like this. So ultimately when it's hanging up, the hat will go in there and won't fall out. That's my plan anyway. And uh, you know it's coming along pretty good so far. I, I don't really have any issues. Uh, the bandsaw worked really good. It's a tool that I got a couple of years ago and didn't think I'd have much use for it, but it gets pretty much uh, a lot of use in the shop. And just my palm sander here, we're rounding over the edges and uh, cleaning, cleaning everything up. I want everything nice and soft. I came up with this idea with a dowel and a piece of sandpaper to try to try to clean the holes up on the inside and yeah, it didn't work as good as I was hoping to either, but eh, it worked out. I was finishing up the sanding right here. You know, I wanted everything nice and smooth. I didn't want any rough edges at all. Nothing that the hat could hang on, hang up on. And uh, once I got everything all done, it looked pretty nice. And this is where uh, I changed my mind. Uh, you know, I, I just couldn't deal with the plywood, so I found a piece of t uh, redwood two by four in my scrap uh, bin, cut it in half. And now I've got uh, redwood that matches the project I'm doing. I'm glad I did that. Uh, that uh, it's going to make it look a lot better. So just some glue and some pin nails right here to square. And once I get everything uh, squared up, then I just uh, drilled some pilot holes and a countersink. And uh, I got some drywall screws and just ran those in there. And this thing is not really going anywhere. Uh, the screws got nice and recessed uh, below the surface, so it's nice and flush. To the back side I'm not going to have any issues with that and this is just a little added touch here at the very end I, I I didn't I didn't plan on doing this but I thought maybe this is going to look make it look kind of cool uh, just kind of burn the wood a little bit and give it that uh, antique or rustic look and uh, that turned out better than I was hoping and I just found a, a, a can of stain I had laying around the shop I think it's like dark oak and that's what I used to finish everything up and you know that 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 was a good color putting that on there and with the burnt wood that uh, turned out pretty nice there it is the finished product and uh, I gotta say that's uh, turned out better than I hope it would so I got it all installed in my shop got my hats on it everything worked out really good I hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching don't forget to rate comment and subscribe for more videos see you next time on Jimbo's Garage